Now, let me set the record straight on something. In terms of my previous talk about Randy Orton versus John Cena for the WWE Championship and the need for that match to be at WrestleMania 33, I have reasons for it, and there are some reasons that are legitimate to a certain degree. Now, granted, again, the match has been done literally hundreds of times, and no, deep down, I do not want to see it from an actual sitting down and watching WrestleMania 33 on the WWE Network and expecting that match to help entertain me from a pure wrestling standpoint. My thoughts and desires for wanting it had more to do with uh, parody and satire reasons and show content reasons and you know my own character reasons and making the build up the path to WrestleMania 33 more entertaining for me and probably for some of you. So my frustration with Bray Wyatt winning the WWE Championship um, at Elimination Chamber really deep down doesn't have anything to do with Cena versus Orton not being for the title at WrestleMania. It's what we should get. It's what you need. It might not be what you want, but it's what you need. But it really is more about Bray Wyatt and about this company and what a Bray Wyatt holding the WWE Championship really means for me as a fan. Now, it's interesting to me because a guy like Bray Wyatt, in theory, should be a type of guy that I'm all over. He should be the type of guy that I'm really big into. When people are pumping cock over Finn Balor and guys like that, you know, it's Bray Wyatt is the type of guy that should have me coming on here and pumping my cock about how great he is and how awesome he is. Because as we know and listening to me over the years, you know, I'm much bigger into the characters and the personalities over the actual entering action. You know, to me, you can have a guy do all types of flips and kicks, and that's wonderful and great and everything, but if there was no reason for that, if there was no purpose for it, there was no meaning for it, there was no story for it, then what the hell difference does it make? The guy just went out there and wrestled like a freaking mark for not a lot of money. Whereas if you've got a guy that has character, has a personality, you know, if you involve him in any type of interesting, compelling story whatsoever, man, that match can mean so much more and the payoff can be so much larger. And just in general, for me, the type of wrestling fan that I am, to me, it's more important to have important and interesting stories with interesting characters and personalities. That way, when you get to the matches, you know, it makes them mean more and it makes them a bigger attraction. It gets me more emotionally invested. And just from a wrestling standpoint, a WWE standpoint in general, I think it's more entertaining to have characters and personalities than it is to have great in-ring performers. Like, I enjoy the work of somebody like an Enzo Amore or Xavier Woods in terms of their sheer entertainment value to me than some of the guys that are noted for being able to go out there and tear the roof off the place in the actual ring. You know, So I look at Bray Wyatt as... In theory, being that type of guy that should be that character, that personality that I should be really down with. Kind of that guy that's the next generation of Undertaker Kane type. That guy that can do all types of crazy and different things with the type of guy that if I'm in a creative role within WWE, I absolutely love. Because I love the potential of possibility of the versatility and flexibility of the character. And I can't wait to sink my teeth into the Bray Wyatt character and maximize the things and the different types of feeling things that I can do with him, especially at a time where the product is so corporate, it's so watered down, it's so vanilla, it's so bland, it's so sane, pretty much across the board. Here is potentially a firefly of a shining light. You know, but I've always been hot and cold on Bray Wyatt, and I blame the WWE for that in a lot of ways. And, you know, when I think about a Bray Wyatt being a world champion, he feels more like a jobber to me than he does a world champion. And before you get all pissed off, let me explain what I mean. Because well, for a while, I've talked about him being one of those pillars of the company, one of those future building blocks, going away from the past and the present and focusing on the future. And this is a guy even still in his late 20s could potentially have years of main event run in front of him. And those are the type of guys that I want to latch on to. Those are the type of guys that I want to build this company around. 
And you look at him too, wrestling's in his blood. He comes from a three generation wrestling family. You know, he has the ability to talk on the microphone. He has a different look than many of the other guys that are being prominently featured in WWE. He actually has a character. He actually has some type of shtick. So imminently more interesting than most of what the WWE current provides me. But just time after time after time, they have screwed the pooch with this dude. The majority of his signature feuds and blow-off matches have not ended well for him. He's lost to far too many marquee opponents for me to all of a sudden sit there and look at him and say, this dude should be a freaking world champion. This dude is a main eventer. If he can't beat this big name, if he can't beat that big name, and he can't really ultimately achieve when it matters the most, and that's not really part of the story, he just kind of sort of mind fucks people, but not totally. And when it comes down to it, a lot of what he says doesn't make much sense. And it doesn't really pay off in terms of the actual in-ring action. And then he loses. And then why the hell are you going to take the guy seriously? It's like early on in Daniel Bryan's run in WWE, the commentators in particular, Michael Cole, they were just running down Daniel Bryan and beating down Daniel Bryan. And he gets to the point where, even though I wasn't a huge Daniel Bryan fan, especially in his early part of his WWE run, a lot of Daniel Bryan fans kind of resent the fact that we're going beyond heel stuff to try and send a message. And we're really just kind of knocking the dude and tearing the dude down. But all of a sudden, we just flip the switch, and you're supposed to care about him like he's the greatest thing in the freaking world. And it, the reality is it just doesn't work that way. And you have put Bray Wyatt in too many bad situations. The John Cena feud is in 2014 is a perfect example of this. Can't beat the dude at WrestleMania when it matters, when you have multiple outs to be able to do something where Bray Wyatt could come off better for it, and frankly, John Cena could come off better for it. Then the next time that they face off, what was it, Extreme Rules, and it was that uh, cage match. And the only reason Bray Wyatt could beat John Cena, now mind you, he had already lost what was glorified three-on-one handicap match at WrestleMania. You come back the next month at pay-per-view, and the only reason he can now beat John Cena is because of an eight-year-old kid uh, comes out of nowhere and starts singing. It what would turn out to be a glorified four-on-one handicap match. At the end of the day, he doesn't go over there, and that's just the problem is there is a lack of consistency in the booking of Bray Wyatt, and the only consistency is, is that when it comes to a big-time match, he loses. And that's not the way you build a top star. That's not a way you build a guy up to be a main event type of talent, a world champion type of dude, which is exactly who Bray Wyatt should be and should have already been. Let me state that perfectly clearly. He should have already been a world champion. He should already feel like a main eventer. Well, the problem is to me now, because of the way they've really screwed the pooch on this guy over the past three and a half damn years, he doesn't feel like a main eventer at all, and he most certainly doesn't feel like he's world champion material. He just doesn't. And you see this so often with Bray Wyatt. It's like this reactionary booking. His company will get really hot and then really cold on him, and there's no real consistency. Again, no real vision or direction for He's here, we're going to go here to get here to get here to get to this ultimate moment. We just don't do that. Typically with Bray Wyatt, as you see, the only time he really gets featured in a big-time prominent way or gets any type of shine is when you're building him up ultimately for somebody else to knock him down. 2014 Royal Rumble, what was it? He beat Daniel Bryan, right? Or was that 2015? It doesn't matter either fucking way. It was 2014, yes. So 2014, he beats Daniel Bryan. Great match, signature victory for Bray Wyatt, but it was only to set up uh, <laughs> him on the silver platter for the breakfast club for John Cena, so that way John Cena could knock him a few pegs down. And I find it ironic now, all of a sudden, come 2017, people are reporting that John Cena insisted, insisted that he put Bray Wyatt over on SmackDown. When this son of a bitch was the same one on Sunday night who refused to be the last dude for Bray Wyatt to eliminate, even though that would have been the most appropriate story, because I've already talked about the reasons he didn't want it to be shown on replays for years, where he's the guy that ultimately surrendered the title to Bray Wyatt. Now when they run that replay, it's going to be AJ Styles. It's something that those of us that understand, we understand what happened. Those of you that don't, don't. And it's that simple. But to come back now on SmackDown and all of a sudden John Cena is advocating for pre putting people over, it's too fucking late for that. 
You should have done this three goddamn years ago when the timing was right and the opportunity was there and the moment was at hand. And this is so often the case with the dipshit like Cena. This is why people don't like him. There's a variety of reasons, but this is number one. All of a sudden now we're supposed to act like we don't see through the bullshit. This is a guy acting with clear remorse because he realizes how much damage he did to the fucking company over the previous decade by blowing through pretty much every damn body in Bray Wyatt is a perfect example of that. He had to go over John Cena in 2014 at WrestleMania 30, so of course he didn't. He had to go over ultimately in that feud with John Cena in 2014, and ultimately he didn't. And as a result, it's allowed the Bray Wyatt character to languish between hot and cold periods of mediocrity in the mid-card hell of WWE for the past three years. Again, it's that monster booking just to build them up to lose to somebody else. They did it for Cena. They did it for Taker the next year at WrestleMania. Hell, you get to WrestleMania 32. I'm supposed to take this guy serious as a WWE champion heading into the biggest show of the year in one of the featured matches against a member of the Breakfast Club when this company didn't even care enough to give him a match last year at WrestleMania and all he was going out there to do was be served up as promo fodder for The Rock so that way The Rock could beat Eric Rowan in six seconds so that way... The other two members of the Wyatt family can get involved, and all three of them try to beat down The Rock, just so that way John Cena could come out and make the save, and we get the John Cena-Rock working together bullshit happening. Well, it's a way to come full circle after they wrestled each other at two straight WrestleManias. It's, again, what it is so often the case. The WWE puts Bray Wyatt in a situation where it's not about Bray Wyatt, and it's hard to get a lot of payoff out of Bray Wyatt if you never get fully invested to make it actually about Bray Wyatt. You can't just go and monster book him for two or three months to hot shot him just to build him up to tear him right back down. Because at some point in time, the people will start to three, see through that shit. That focus is always on somebody else. It's not ever actually on the guy. And even now, it feels like in the build-up to this match, Bray Wyatt is the champion. But the focus is more on the Breakfast Club member, Randall Keith Orton. And even if you want to sit there and say, well, they're trying to finally get it right, and they're rectifying previous wrongs. Well, two big pinfall victories in a 48-hour stretch does not erase three and a half years of fuck-ups and mistakes and blown opportunities. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. And when you look at where the Bray Wyatt character's been, even in recent months, you want to try and spin this crap. You know, maybe there's a story there with him and Randy Orton and him and Luke Harper. There's a story there. It doesn't mean that that story necessarily has to involve the world title. And it most certainly shouldn't involve the world title. This is more of a personal type of feud that feels like it belongs at the mid-card of a WrestleMania and not potentially as the opening match of WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. And, and furthermore, it just kind of speaks to what I think is a more fundamental problem with the WWE product in general. And frankly, the fan base too. Not everybody is meant to be a world champion. Not everybody deserves to be a world champion. And not everybody should be a world champion. Typically, you want to save your world championship for your biggest stars, your best talents, your biggest money draws, especially the money draw part. Now, sometimes a guy's a big enough money draw that giving them the belt produces a diminishing return. So sometimes you want to use that belt to elevate and prop somebody to get them to that next level. But they've got to be close to the next level to really get them that force up. Sometimes it doesn't have to go on the top guy because they don't need the belt. If they don't need the belt, then why use it? But you do want to have the belt on a big star, somebody you are at least, if nothing else, trying to make and launch into a big star. Those are the type of guys that should be the champion. And what happens is in the WWE in recent years, you have far too many champions, which ultimately only serves to devalue the title that they're fighting for and they're ultimately holding, and the men that actually hold them. Like, you think about it. How am I supposed to take a fucking world title seriously if guys like Dolph Ziggler have been two-time world champions? Finn Balor has been world champion. You know, Great Khali has been world champion. Yeah, you, know, you could go on and on and on with some of the scrubs that have held the top belts in the damn company. You have too many dudes that can win it. It eliminates that special feeling of somebody actually being the world champion. 
And then on top of that, because you have so many guys in the mix and you don't really have a clearly defined mid card because you have world champions and former world champions sprinkled all throughout the card from the opener to the main event, you get a lot of short title reigns, a lot of hot shotted booking decisions, and it ultimately leads to a lot of situations where former world champions are jobbing in curtain jerker matches at big pay-per-views. Like typically, for the most part, guys that are in that main event spot, that world title spot, should not be getting out of that world title main event scene. They should be your top four, six, or eight guys in the company, and they should be pretty consistent. Every once in a while, you might bring them down just a peg, but you're going to do it because there's a story here where you're trying to elevate this guy as well and then eventually bring him up. But what happens in WWE is you get a guy, you just throw the title on him for no real rhyme or reason or semblance of sense whatsoever, then the title reign stinks, and the floor just drops out from under him, and then he's back to jobbing in the opening match of the pay-per-view around the damn pre-show. And it feels like that's exactly what Bray Wyatt is. What has he really done lately that indicates that he was ready for a world title shot? Other than just time and he hadn't fucking gotten it yet. What is tag team title reign? Oh, American Alpha is a fucking tag team champs on SmackDown. And you saw that stinker of a waste of time of freaking match at the Royal Rumble. What the hell does that mean? That's not shit. If you're telling me he was a former tag team champion in the Hogan era of the 80s or the Attitude Era of the late 90s, that could mean something. Tag team champion in this era? Doesn't mean shit. What, he once went over Dean Ambrose in a freaking feud? What the hell does that mean? Went up against Roman Reigns, he lost the big one. Went up against John Cena, lost multiple big ones. Went up against Taker at WrestleMania, lost that big one. That's what it's all about. So a guy who's the majority of his signature moments and matches in, in WWE have been about his losses. Now I'm supposed to care about the one he won? Now I'm supposed to believe that this guy is a world champion? How the hell am I supposed to take this guy seriously? I just don't. You know, I understand there's an appeal there that, you know, as fans, you're always looking for something new and you're always looking for something different. And the guys that you're familiar with that have been there quite a while and you feel like it's their time and, and it's great when they get that moment, you know, maybe in the immediate short term it is. But in the bigger picture, in the grandest scheme of things, it just isn't. Like I said, from a pure feel standpoint, Bray Wyatt in no way, shape, or form feels like a guy that should be challenging for a world title at WrestleMania, let alone even a mid-card title at WrestleMania, let alone being the WWE champion heading into the biggest show of the damn year. If he feels like a world champion, it would only be that filler transitional heel world champion that you would get in May, June, July to pass it over to some other babyface who will then take the belt and carry it for a long time. You know, I'd like to see nothing more than this company actually get behind Bray Wyatt and actually make something out of this world title run and elevate him to that place that he should have been three damn years ago. But they've done so much damage to the character, and I just have a lack of general confidence in the creative vision of the WWE to be able to rectify those previous wrongs. I just don't see where this title ring from Bray Wyatt is going to be anything other than forgettable and largely a waste of time. So you can have your victory in your your moment where you enjoy this and everything else. I'm just disappointed that I couldn't have that moment because I just couldn't take it seriously. And it's a shame because again, a guy like Bray Wyatt is the type of guy that I should be all for. I should be pants down for this dude in a strictly heterosexual sense. I should be all about him. I should be basing characters and skits off of him. I should be doing videos talking about the majesty of the awesomeness of Bray Wyatt. I should be bitching back and forth with some of you when you're talking about at this spot monkey or this indie fuck should be the world champion and not somebody like Bray Wyatt. Instead, I just can't do that. And it's a shame because the WWE took somebody that should have been somebody that I could have latched onto for the next decade and made me not care about him. And just because he got the world title doesn't mean that I care about him anymore. 
Because if anything, it just deals with the bigger problem of too many people win the damn title to the point now where he based it off of Wyatt's history the past three and a half years. For the most part, he feels more like a glorified jobber than a WWE champion, period. 